Hi, Scott Machine Gun Dad. Welcome back to my channel. I'm supposed to beg and uh, plead that you hit the like and subscribe button and forward this to others. How about doing me a solid and following me on Rumble so I can get the F off of YouTube? And if you saw the header, we're going to talk about FAL today, or a specific model of the FAL. Because in today's market, FALs have gone astronomically high and I believe the only current manufacturer is DSA if and when they produce them. I don't think they routinely produce all their models. The gun I'm talking about was built during the Clinton ban. For those of you that aren't old enough to suffer through that, it sucked. But uh, part sets were available. So what happened during the Clinton ban is you know, a lot of companies were making just um, receivers plus they were allowed to import receivers from Brazil by Embel which is a quality receiver to build your Austrian parts set or whatever metric parts set you had on it. At Century you can build a couple Eng uh, um, English parts sets, I believe they are Australian parts sets on metric receivers and they just ground the fronts out. So you have that hodgepodge of um, home builds at that time period. But one of the companies but specifically Pacific Arms Corporation had a better idea. What they did was they brought in Embell military kits, Embell semi-receivers, and had them professionally assembled by a third party in Texas. And they called that the M40, M444. Now what's the difference between an M444 and a standard size FAL from that time period? This right here. In order to meet the Clinton ban, they took the factory flash hider slash bayonet off, put something on it that looks almost completely identical to it without the flats on it, the hook on the bayonet, and inside here there are no threads for the blank adapter. That's it. That's all they had to do because you were allowed two features, detachable magazine and the pistol grip. So what you get is an M-Bell. FAL built with a quality part set on a quality receiver assembled by somebody who's not doing it in their backyards and using spare parts. So how do you t how do you find a M444 from somebody's home build? Because when M-Bell receivers were brought in, they were not marked M444. They were just marked as I'm going to show you. An M-Bell receiver from that time period is going to have this marking on it. The M bell marking with the and if you're lucky and you get a good one, it'll have the gear on it. I think, matter of fact, all the M bell semis have the gear on it. How can you tell it's a 444? Well, first of all, if you can see here, the serial number begins with PAC, that's for Pacific Arms Corporation. All right, that's who imported the receiver. The guns were assembled by Liberty Armory in Liberty, Texas. All right. And it says model M444-308 Sporter. Now that's right next to my finger. It's really light, so I'm going to try to rotate it so my camera guy can pick that up. All right. So you're on Gun Broker, you're on whatever site, you're at a gun show, and a guy's got a FAL and he wants typical FAL money. But he may want less because it has this instead of the actual FAL flash hider. And you're like, well, that could be a part set build. I don't know who did that, blah, blah, blah. Look for that M444. If that M444 is there, you're getting an M-Bell parts kit on an M-Bell semi-automatic receiver built by somebody that knows what he was doing. That assuming that it wasn't beat to crap between now and 92 or 95 and 96 when these were built, you're getting a heck of an FAL in today's market. It's a good investment. I would highly recommend these. I've had this gun since, you know, the importer, um, they sold them, and um, I've never had a lick of trouble with this gun. The other thing I did when I bought it, it had green furniture on it, but the green furniture I had wasn't cut for a bipod. This barrel has the bipod cut in on it, so I switched it over with the plan of putting a bipod on it, the factory bipod on it eventually. I'm just trying to give you a little free advice if you're an FAL, shopping for an FAL. I'm going to take it out of the range and shoot a couple rounds through it. Hey, I'm out here with my M444. 
I have 10 rounds loaded on the 20 round magazine. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier because I taped the inside part quite a while ago that the uh, last round bolt a hole pin. I defeated it so I could run the X Products drum. I don't like the drum so I have to go out and order a new part. It still manually locks open but it won't lock open on the last shot. I'm sure if you've seen this, uh, if you've shot an FAO, this won't be anything special for you. But I am talking about the gun, so I should take it for a run. Let's see if I can get my glasses up out of the way. See, click. Nice little flinch there, too. Did not lock open on the last shot because of something I did. The whole point of the video, if you're in the, in the market for used FAL and you can find an M444, assuming the previous owner didn't beat it into the ground, it's a heck of a rifle. Thanks again for coming to the channel. Do me a solid. Follow me on Rumble. Thanks again. See you soon.